Hi, this is Sonu Bharti and as you all know, the biggest story of the day or the week of, or the year is that IBM is going to acquire Red Hat for $34 billion. That's incredible. Uh, there has been some mixed reaction from some community members. So I just wanted to quickly give a, a wrap up of what's going on and should you be worried about it or not at all. So the first thing first is that, yes, IBM is going to acquire Red Hat for $34 billion, that's true. And what it means is that Red Hat is not going to be absorbed by IBM where IBM will distribute technologies and talent and absorb into its own products portfolio. Red Hat will remain as an independent entity within IBM and this is not unique we have already seen similar you know, deals earlier look at LinkedIn which is part of Microsoft or GitHub or YouTube which is part of Google which is part of Alphabet so these companies remain intact as an independent entity or look at Suze uh, ever since it was out of novel it has maintained its own independence within whatever ownership there was there which also mean that the branding of red hat will remain as such you will still have rel you will still have all those red hat products of course some changes will happen and that's the whole part of uh, why red hat agreed to be acquired by ibm or why ibm agreed to acquire red hat and the, in my opinion, the, the whole reason is that the landscape is changing. If you look at Red Hat's revenues, you'll see that Linux is still the dominant player. It's still bringing the lion's share when it comes to revenues. But you will not notice any significant year or year on year growth in that market. The growth is happening in emerging technologies which is primarily cloud centric technologies and product portfolio that Red Hat has. So at one end, you have a, a dominant market that Red Hat has, which is Linux, but that market is not growing. Uh, a simple reason is that people are not setting up new data centers anymore. Most people are moving to cloud these days and those cloud happen to be public cloud, which is AWS, Azure, Google Compute, and then IBM also had its own cloud, and Oracle is also coming out with its own cloud, and then of course you have private cloud, which is powered by OpenStack. And as everybody is moving to the cloud, Red Hat really doesn't have any dog in that game. They have all those technologies that you can use when you are moving between this cloud or managing those things, whether it's AWS or Azure or Google Compute or OpenStack. But they don't have their own cloud so they can only grow to an extent at the same time when we look at ibm they have this cloud business which is actually not uh, that dominant it's the distant maybe fourth after google compute engine and then they have you know a very strong mainframe market and they are kind of reviving the main mainframe market with zori project and they also have z systems which already runs Linux and um, uh, those systems run RHEL, uh, SUSE and Ubuntu. So they also need a competence technology which brings them this expertise from the Linux and open source world uh, because they are kind of neutral player, whatever you ask, I will do that. But they don't have any kind of dog in that game from that perspective so Red Hat brings their whole portfolio of Linux based technologies and hybrid cloud through Kubernetes and OpenShift and all those uh, technologies that they have developed over here to IBM uh, so, so think of it as the, the way I look at the kind of merger between Dell and EMC where Dell was more or less like a hardware vendor and EMC was more or less like a virtual virtualization vendor and they come together to to create a big company 
that is suited for not only the legacy workload but also the modern workload so when i look at ibm and red hat deal i see the same kind of amalgamation of uh, technologies of past which are which ibm is already you know moving towards you know future as i mentioned zoe project plus they also have you know their own cloud business and the technologies that red hat is building for the future so suddenly with with, with IBM and Red Hat combination, we will see a powerhouse that is purely open source. Well, of course, you may or may not know, IBM does do a lot of open source stuff. As I said, their own new mainframe project, Zoe, is open source, and they have done a lot of open source projects in the past. In fact, IBM is among the top 10 contributors to the Linux kernel itself. And if you know of OIN, Open Innovation Network, you must have heard about it a lot in news lately because Microsoft joined OIN. That was kind of started by IBM back in those days where they donated all their, not donated, but they brought their patents to the pool to protect Linux. And, and they do a lot of open source these days. Actually, it's hard to find any big company these days that doesn't do open source. Every company is doing open source, but when you bring IBM and Red Hat together, suddenly you have two powerhouses. Uh, suddenly you will have, imagine uh, I was talking to Jim Whitehurst and I was asking him, you know, that oh, since TFI, actually the word TFI comes from Jim Whitehurst. I was at his keynote in one of the Red Hat Summit and uh, we were interviewing and he said that the fourth industrial revolution which is also the short form of this site, TFIR, the fourth industrial evolution, is going to be powered by open source. And then I asked, you know, if we look at all those emerging technologies, uh, where is Red Hat in machine learning and all those, or IoT and all those technologies? And he said, you know, that they can invest only so much, given how much the company can grow. So they were kind of capped uh, from the revenue point of view as I said, you know, the Linux market has kind of saturated and since they don't have their own cloud business, they can grow only so much. So from revenue point of view, they were kind of capped. And since they were capped from the revenue point of view, they could not also invest in those technologies. They, he didn't want to spread himself too thin by doing all those things. But now you have Watson and, so, and you have IoT platform. So suddenly uh, now Red Hat have access to this huge bland escape of technologies that IBM has developed over years. So you have one company at one end that has this wide spectrum of all these core technologies that they have developed over ages. And then on the second spectrum, end of the spectrum, you have Red Hat that is investing in latest emerging technologies. So when you put these two companies together, you, you get a company that is going to change a lot of things. So I'm really excited about how Red Hat and IBM are going to work together to, to I mean, just imagine all those scenarios where um, the IoT platforms, the mainframes, the, the machine learning platforms, they're all powered by all these open source technologies. And um, given the value of Red Hat, there are some speculations already that uh, sooner or later, Jim Whitehurst, the current CEO of Red Hat, may succeed the existing CEO of IBM and become the CEO of IBM. So the way I look at it, where a lot of people are worried that, you know, the because a lot of people who don't know IBM, since it's a massive company, they're worried that maybe it will dilute the open source culture of Red Hat. But the fact is that when you bring open source people into any company, it's more or less like you take water and you take a drop of color, even if just one drop you put in the glass of water, that drop of color doesn't lose its colorless. Actually, it changes the color of the water. So what is going to happen is that as IBM, sorry, Red Hat people comes to IBM, they will change the culture of IBM. IBM will become uh, even more open. It will become a pure open source company. Not pure open source, they may still have some, but uh, they may still have some proprietary code, but even, even, even Red Hat continues to remind people 
that they are an enterprise customer that uses open source development model. You need to understand that open source is not a business model. It's a development model. Use that model to develop your software, to develop code and do other things. But you have to have a business model. So Red Hat is an enterprise company that happens to use the open source development model. The same is going to happen at IBM. IBM will be, it is an enterprise company, which will increase uh, open source across as its domain. So I, I think it's, it's good news for, for IBM and Red Hat and for, for open source in general because now Red Hat has access to all those customers, all those markets that IBM operates in and it's incredible. Um, and I'm also happy about the future of those open source projects which are run or maintained by Red Hat. I asked during a press call uh, this morning, and I asked, you know, what is going to be the future? What will be the impact? And uh, Paul said that there will be no impact. Those projects will continue to run the way they are run today because Red Hat, first of all, will remain an independent entity within IBM. Second is that given the open source nature of those projects, uh, people some sometimes people who worry too much about um, open source project they actually don't understand how open source works. Once you open source a project, it's open source for life. Even if you walk away or if you plan to close it, someone else will take over. That's the that's the whole beauty of you know open source. So I'm not at all worried about it. I'm actually even more excited because we may see even more uh, adoption of open source within IBM and through that we will see more adoption of open source in new verticals, in new markets, in new industries. So no no surprises in a couple of years you will see a lot of you know IOTs. I mean most of these technologies are already open source, but you will see more and more technologies that will come from this IBM and Red Hat. Uh, I actually like the word amalgamation instead of acquisition. Uh, all these technologies will be open source. And as I said, you know, or a lot of pundits are predicting that, you know, Jim Whitehurst may take over IBM as their CEO, and we may actually see a kind of reverse merger where it will, I, Red Hat will color IBM all red. So you never know, but that is a very exciting scenario. So I'm super happy about this news. And I think we should all kind of congratulate uh, our friends at Red Hat and IBM for this great move. I'm looking forward to meeting more people at IBM and Red Hat. I actually have some interviews from Red Hat and IBM that I'll be releasing soon. I just published an interview of Dr. Angel Dias where he explained why open source is so important for IBM. So I'm looking forward to meeting more and more people from IBM and Red Hat. I have a lot of friends at Red Hat already and I'm, uh, I'm sure that soon I will have a lot of friends at IBM too. So I'm excited about it. I think that you should all be excited about it. I think it's a great move. So uh, congratulations Red Hat and uh, thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe to this channel. See you next time in the next video. Bye for now.